Today Show Health, sponsored by Boots. You're very welcome back. Now, Ireland has the highest mortality rate for melanoma in Europe, with malignant melanoma being the third most common cancer here. 77% of people would not recognise the signs of melanoma, meaning that early detection, of course, is key. Boots pharmacist Donal O'Sullivan is here now to tell us all about it and to show us how to recognise these signs. Donal, great yeah, to have you. Thank you, Mother. It's a worry, Donal, when you, when you think that in a country where we don't get a lot of sun, that skin cancer or melanoma is so prominent. Yeah. yeah. I suppose we'll say there, maybe we just don't take enough care mm. in the sun. So we'll say there are recommendations about staying safe in the sun. For example, we should be avoiding sun between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And when we do go out, we should wear a hat with a broad brim, clothes that give ultraviolet protection. Yeah. And even the, the Irish Cancer Society, they have the sun smart that they're even saying from April to September, we should be using sun lotion from factor 30 at least, it's, so it's maybe we're not covering these things. Yeah, and we'll, we'll actually talk about some yeah. lotions and when to apply them and how to apply them and all that, but let's talk about melanoma and actually yeah. uh, moles, I suppose, because that's the danger when it comes to melanoma. Exactly. A, a mole you might have on your skin yeah. could turn and change. We actually have yeah. uh, some moles here. We'll take a look at them on screen. You might talk us through I will, these. I will indeed. And the signs of all that. Well, put it in the back there, Tony, if you don't mind, so we can read through them. Okay, let's take a look at this kind of a brown mole first on top. Yeah. Tell so us basically about what you're talking about here, Mara, is... This mm. is about the risk factors yeah. when you're examining your moles to see if they could lead to melanoma. Okay. So, so any of these moles could change and turn, is that right? It would. So like the A stands for asymmetry. So yeah. if one half of the mole isn't the same as the other half, that's riskier. If the boundary is jagged, higher risk. It would be of concern if the mole is black, blue, even multicoloured Mara. And then mm. D then is for diameter. So if it's bigger than six millimetres, that is a risk for melanoma. And... E is evolving, so if you see any changes regarding the size, the shape, colour, or we'll say if it's starting to bleed, anything like that, Mara, it's better to get them checked out okay. fast in you. you know? um, a lot of people, of course, we're fair, Irish people in That's general right. are kind of fair, yeah. so we would have freckles, a lot of freckles, maybe people get freckles yeah. on their face or freckles on their bodies. Yeah. To distinguish between a freckle and a mole, are moles mostly raised? So, not, not, not necessarily. necessarily. So, like, a freckle could be light brown, small, and they, they would result from sun exposure and fair-skinned people would be genetically prone to them. Okay. But we'll say moles would be areas of darkened skin, brown, black, and they could be there from early childhood. You could get the majority of them there even in the first 25 years of your, of your life. Okay. You know? so and they, are they as a result of, of sun exposure that these things come onto our skin? Not necessarily. Sometimes no. you could even have moles from, from very early on and they could be all over the body, whereas the freckles would be more on areas that have been exposed to sunlight. Now, ultraviolet will definitely play a factor in the formation of, of moles and changes in them. Yeah. Um, so that's where that comes okay. in. But you could... Moles, you could have them anywhere in the body, like you right. have to be careful. I know you have a scanning service in yeah, Boots. Tell us about right. that and how it works. Yeah, so basically, we'll say if you have a mole or a pigmented skin lesion that you're concerned about, you just go on boots.ie and you can book an appointment. And basically, we use this device here, Mara. Okay. Now, Brendan, the floor like manager, scanner. thought I was going to shoot him with this idea, but this is a... <laughs> <laughs> this so is this device would be plugged into something. We're just showing it. Actually, uh, we're know, just showing it. Do you want to take a look at something I, like here. a mole or so a freckle example, or something I have on my, on for my example, hand? Any, this, is, this is a C-scope in here. So how yeah. we would be doing it, it would be cabled up to the computer. And we basically would be putting the device here and it would take an image of the skin. Yeah. Highly illuminated, highly magnified. It goes up to two millimetres deep in the skin, Mara. You get up to five different images. And what we do with the images then yeah, so is what, yeah. we transmit those uh, securely to screen cancer dermatology specialists. And they assess the scans and they look at the consultation notes that we've transmitted to them. And they assess whether that mole could be at an increased risk of melanoma and whether a person should do something about it. Okay. And the beauty of the service, Mara, is that you get their report within roughly a week. Yeah. And... If it does require further investigation, a specialist nurse, she's going to give you a phone call just to discuss the next steps that you should take. Okay, so really it's painless. It's taking a photograph really of your mole, yeah. but going deep into the skin. Now, yeah. just as a result, when a mole changes into melanoma, is that going deeper into your skin? That's what happens with cancer as it transforms. Can you give so us a little we'll bit of the information? Area, so what happens with cancer? So if we're giving an example there, mm. ultraviolet comes along, it damages some of the, the DNA in your cells and that could cause something like these cells to start growing faster than they should be, and that's where you get a tumour. 
Now, the trouble with melanoma is that, unfortunately, the tumour can spread to other areas. So early diagnosis is the key right. because not only would early diagnosis help save lives, but it also makes the treatment a lot less severe the sooner that you can yeah, get it seen to rather yeah. than... I don't think people realise how dangerous skin cancer is. Yeah. And it is a huge killer in this country, and that's the reality yeah, of it. Yeah. Now, let's talk about protecting ourselves in the sun. We're going to be talking a little later with our news panel or how people are actually taking sunbed sessions, how under-18s are taking sunbed sessions yeah. all the time. I thought that was a thing of the past. It certainly is not. This really increases your risk of melanoma. By 74%, Mara. So sunbeds are... Are a no-no. They are a no-no. They're okay. a complete Whatever age you are. Like that. They're, Let's uh, they're talk us through a little bit of sun factor. Now, you know, when yeah. we go out in the sun, we've got UVA rays and we've got UVB rays. That's now, right. UVA rays are the rays we don't see. They could be there with no sun. Is that right? So we'll say both of the rays could, could be there. So even on your phone now, you can get a UV index on the weather apps. And if you have a UV index of three or higher, that means then that you're at increased risk of, 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 of sun damage. Okay. But we'll say even lower than three. Last Monday, I was back in the highest part of the world surfing. And even though the UV index was one, I could see the following day that I had a slight tan. And okay. no matter how you look at it, a tan is a sign of skin damage, Mara. So okay. you can never be too careful. Let's talk about this. So we should always wear at least factor 30. So even if yeah. we're like you on a surfboard uh, wearing yeah. a nice wetsuit or a dry suit, <laughs> you should still have something like this on your face. And this is specifically for the face, these type of sun creams. So they kind of are almost skincare for the face, really. And then children, should we put a higher factor on kids? Well, I think, you know, talking, you were talking about wetsuits here, yeah, but do you know what's a great idea with kids if they're a day at the beach is those neoprene yeah. wetsuits. There's a lot of them around now. Exactly, well. I would say, and there's even a lotion. No, it's not one of the ones I was given there, even a mm. sultan one that I put on the lads on the beach then because you can get up to eight hours okay. protection playtime and up to three hours water right. protection. So you will have to watch out for the water resistance, you have to watch out for the UVA rating if it's five star, you have to watch out the higher the number on the lotion, the more the protection. But people too have this idea, Mara, that oh, 50 plus, I'm not going to get burned. Right. But you can still get, no, you can. You can still get damaged. With so it. we're talking about as well, and that's really interesting and important, Donald, check yeah. that your sun creams and your sun factors have both UVA and UVB protection and they're at least five star and that's easy because they actually have a little sign at the back telling you all that that's simple enough okay so we put these on us these are all just different types of course some sun lotions yeah. are better protection if you're in the sea or not but once for kids especially you can get all of these types of lotions in boots and, and other places as well exactly. other chemists around the country as well yeah. and in that all these different lotions um protect kids for for longer how often do you think we need to apply a sun cream and when should we put it on so we'll say a lot of them you'd have to follow the instructions. So mm. you could be talking about maybe 15, 15 minutes before going out. And a lot of the time you might have to reapply it after an hour and a half, two hours. Now, some of them will give longer action. But what I would say is that if your kids are going out in nice white clothes, sometimes yeah. you might need to, to check it because they might be just a, that small bit thicker. Brilliant. So uh, Donalys, well, we should talk about uh, the scan. Uh, go on to boots.ie for that mole scanning um, service that you offer. But you can't check eyelids or ears, I believe. It's on all because other parts you see of the, the body. You can see yourself with the device in here. Yeah. You're not going to get a proper yeah. image from but it. But an awful or... lot of people have moles on their body, on their backs, and moles yeah. in areas that you mightn't even notice on your back. Get somebody else to exactly. check if there's any change. Like the recommendations are you should check them every few months. But I think it's no harm or to, to set a reminder on yeah. your phone or whatever. Once a month, draw a diagram of the body. Yeah. Plot where your moles are, take photographs, measurements, and for your back, get somebody else to look at Check it too. It you can brilliant. never be too careful. And of course, you can get these moles removed before they turn as well, if they are in any way dangerous looking. Thanks very much, Donald, as always. Good morning. Now, uh, Donald, of course, if you at home, you'd like any more information on anything we discussed here, you can head over to boots.ie for more details. And Donald will be back with us again in a couple of weeks' time. Today's show health, sponsored by Boots.